Hello, everyone. Starting this hour again in the occupied West Bank, four Palestinians have been killed by Israeli security forces this morning. We're looking at four different locations for you right now. Top left, Ramallah, where those protests have only increased in the past hour uh, since we were on air. Uh, protests against the Israeli occupation and what's happening, of course, in Gaza as well. Uh, bottom right for you is Bethlehem, where protests have gathered. Many of people gathering for peaceful protests initially after Friday prayers, but that anger, as we say, only growing over the occupation and the bombardment of Gaza. Bottom left, Stedot, is maybe a sign of what's to come. Remembering Hamas fired 220 rockets towards Israel, and at least eight people have died there, and the Israeli military looking to counter that by increasing its forces along the border with Gaza uh, up to, I think, 7,000 troops have been called up and there are tanks in place as well. And, of course, top right Gaza, quiet at the moment after overnight Israeli jets and tanks and artillery hammered the territory. 119 Palestinians, including 31 children, have been killed in Gaza since the offensive began on Monday. Four locations uh, for you, but all very much intertwined. Our correspondents are across all of those locations as well. There's Harry Fawcett in southern Israel. We'll talk to him shortly. Also, Safwal al Khalut in Gaza. Starting, though, Nida Ibrahim and Ramallah in the occupied West Bank. And things have really developed behind you in just the last hour, Nida. Yes, and we have also one more Palestinian who was uh, confirmed dead by Israeli fire in one of the confrontations that are going on in the occupied West Bank. We're hearing that there are more than 200 locations uh, in the, the occupied West Bank where Palestinians are confronting with the Israeli army. Uh, this makes the total toll of Palestinians killed in the occupied West Bank since the early hours of Friday to five. Four of them in these confrontations and one uh, the Israeli army says he attempted to attack uh, the Israeli soldiers near the illegal Israeli settlement of Ofra. We have no way to um, uh, verify the Israeli narrative, but uh, this is something that usually also happens when Palestinians are killed by Israeli army's fire in uh, military checkpoints. The army's narrative is usually that someone uh, tried to, uh, um, uh, to conduct an attack. Um, as far as their families are concerned, mostly say, most of them say that that wasn't the case. Of course, in some cases, we know that Palestinians are attacking Israelis uh, as, a, as part of what they want to do to fight the Israeli occupation. This is also one element of what Palestinians are trying to do now here. Uh, protesters coming to uh, the um, near the illegal Jewish settlement of Beit Al near Ramallah, where there is a military checkpoint and where Palestinians are using uh, rocks and uh, we've seen them using fireworks as well as uh, Molotov cocktails. These are Kamal uh, bottles that are filled with petrol, uh, a burning uh, piece of cloth and some glue, and then it is targeted at the Israeli soldiers. It's, it's lit and thrown at the Israeli soldiers. It's important to remember that the ability of rocks and, and these Molotov cocktails, and sometimes uh, Palestinians, uh, like in Bethlehem, use marbles, the ability of those things to inflict a danger or put the Israeli soldiers in danger is very minimal. So Palestinian protesters are telling us while they know that the power dynamic is not in their favor, it is one way of showing the Israeli occupation that they are not afraid, that they are going to still be fighting and they're not going to be scared of the heavily armed soldiers that we are seeing now here in Bet El and in more than 200 other locations. Let's not forget that on Saturday, Palestinian commemorate a Nakba, which is the creation of the State of Israel. And as far as Palestinians are, are uh, concerned, it reminds them of the forceful displacements of hundreds of thousands of Palestinians to allow for the creation of the State of Israel. Of course, that was followed later by the occupation of uh, the West Bank, uh, the Gaza Strip, uh, of course, the West Bank, including East Jerusalem. So there's, there's a lot of frustration here at what this memory uh, brings to the Palestinians. So that's why we're seeing many of them here and in more than 200 other locations in the West Bank.
And just out of interest, Nida, when we see the Israeli presence that is there today, the tanks and the troops which are brought in, on a quote-unquote normal day, do you still see them around the place? Again, I'm always trying to give our viewers an idea of what it's like on an, an, an everyday basis, even when there's not an acute conflict. Even when there is not a protest, even when there is not a conflict, you might be seeing tanks here and there in the uh, occupied West Bank. Now, the ones we're seeing today, including the foul-smelling water tank, are brought in here as a way to disperse the crowd, to intimidate the Palestinians. Um, we've even seen by the Israelis the use of some, uh, something here called Musta'ribin, which is people who are Israelis who look like Arabs to try and infl infiltrate in between the protesters to try and arrest them. So you, you have all these things that are related to protests per se, but you have other aspects of the Israeli occupation that are always there. You see the illegal Israeli uh, settlements on any way between the, uh, one Palestinian city to another. Even if it's uh, half an hour away, you will be using bypass roads that mm. are filled with more than 700 cameras. So the, the, the fact that the occupation is there is not something that uh, it's easy to miss. But maybe some of these elements are just related to the protesters, per se. Got it. OK, thank you. Nida Ibrahim in Ramallah in the occupied West Bank. That's top left on your screen right now. That's ground level, uh, just down from where Nida and her team are broadcasting from. The, the four pictures you see on screen now tells an interesting story because look at the one place that's quiet. It's top right, Gaza. Now, that would we would suspect change, as we've seen over the last few days when airstrikes increase into the evening. But it is everywhere else, Ramallah, Nablus and Bethlehem in the occupied West Bank, where there is the unrest today as people protest what has uh, been going on in Gaza. But as we keep making the point again, they are overall po protesting the idea of being under occupation for decades. Right, moving to our next correspondent, it's Harry Fawcett. He's in southern Israel. The one picture we didn't have on that screen there, Harry, of course, is where uh, you are, the build-up of Israeli uh, military around the border. Does that, I mean, it suggests something is happening. Yes, well, I, I think it's, uh, to some extent, it shows really what has already happened. Let me just tell you, uh, even more uh, recently what has just happened. There's been another big volley of rocket fire coming out from Gaza, uh, some of it to our, our uh, east, some of it to the west of us, to the east of us as well. Um, and the indications from the alerts that flash up on our phones are that it was the city of Ashkelon. Uh, we heard some uh, interceptions quite close to us. Uh, also the city of Beersheba, uh, a long way uh, from Gaza uh, to the east and in the area around the Gaza envelope as well. So another round of rocket fire coming out from Gaza. In terms of the massed weaponry you see behind me here, this was very much in play on the previous night and through the night in what was the biggest bombardment of the entire uh, military escalation so far from the Israeli side, uh, attacking the north of the Gaza Strip uh, we saw scenes of hundreds of residents, Palestinians streaming south through the streets of Gaza as that attack took place. Uh, civilians killed in that as well. One mother and three children were killed in that uh, attack. But there is reporting also coming out from the Israeli media as to exactly what the story of that may well have been from the Israeli military perspective. They talked about the potential of a ground invasion earlier in the day. They tweeted out, the Israeli military, that they were attacking uh, from the ground and the air in Gaza, which led to reports of a potential invasion. There is reporting that that was part of a plan to try to drive uh, Hamas and Islamic Jihad and other fighters into a tunnel network and cause some of them to come out and try to attack any incoming ground invasion before a very major strike, 450 missiles from 160 aircraft, 150 separate targets in that very concentrated area uh, in northwestern Gaza. So uh, that is the reporting coming out of the Israeli media. We're not hearing anything uh, officially from Hamas about that yet. There was a major response after that, about 3 a.m., 220 rockets fired uh, at Ashkelon. Uh, but that is the latest, that far from 
a sense of an imminent ground invasion happening right now, mm. that this might be the, uh, the, the remnants of, of what was a preordained plan uh, overnight. Okay, wait and see at the border then. It's Harry Fawcett in southern Israel. Thank you. Into Gaza we go. Safwat al Kahlut is there for us. And can you expand on any of that, Safwat? Uh, I'm reading here as well the Qassam Brigade's talking about new rockets being launched. Yeah, let's start with the new and the freshest uh, Israeli air strike. A uh, few minutes ago, uh, the Israeli uh, fighting jets they hit one of the local banks uh, near Al Shifa Hospital. Uh, this is the third uh, bank that the Israeli uh, air forces have been attacking, or the Israeli army has been attacking, claiming that this, these are part of Hamas financial infrastructure. Uh, minutes before the, the Israeli airstrike, uh, the military wing of Hamas, well known as Al Qassam Brigades, they fired a new barrage of rockets towards uh, Ashkelon and Ashdod as well. Um, earlier, we could uh, realize that the Israelis are intensifying their fire in the central area of the Gaza Strip, specifically in Al Borej refugee camp. They hit uh, uh, some residential houses. They said that they belong uh, the, to uh, fighting to uh, fighting commanders belong to the military wing of Hamas, but. Uh, uh, and some of the residential houses who are uh, uh, next and attached to, uh, to this house have been also destroyed. And there is uh, uh, some uh, civilians who have been killed in, this in these attacks in the central area of Gaza. The Minister of Health says that the number uh, of uh, kill the people killed in the latest round of escalation is 122, including 31 uh, children and 20 women. Uh, the number of uh, injured people raised up right up to uh, 900 people. And the ambulance services, they told us, they believe that uh, they, uh, there are more people under the rubble of the destroyed houses from the last night and even earlier uh, in the Israeli attacks. Uh, hundreds of, uh, of people also, from last night until now, are still moving from their homes uh, uh, across the borderline towards the United Nations uh, schools, taking from these schools as shelters. We spoke to UNRWA. They said, yes, people opened the doors and they fled from uh, the bombardments and they are taking shelters from, uh, from our schools. Mm. UNRWA is still considering uh, the humanitarian aid or what they can do for the people who are taking shelters from their schools. Thank you for those updates. Safar al-Khalut in Gaza.